Hello Geeks and Gamers, we're back again. We're still at uh, Palladium Open House and now we're going to talk about some Robotech RPG tactics and wherever else that seems to lead us. But um, you've been doing this for, well, you just said, I think 34 years. Yep. And, oh, for those of you that didn't catch part one, I'm with Kevin. <laughs> uh, you, obviously you can't miss them, right? Um, <clears throat> 34 years in, well actually I guess it would have been 33 years in technically. Uh, they decided to branch out, and instead of doing a board game, they ended up with a miniatures game. And I kind of want to know the story behind how that evolved. Uh, it was just one of these things where uh, we, we had the, uh, the unique opportunity to, to do it. Um, we started to become more and more aware that uh, war games and miniature games were increasingly popular. And uh, we had a couple of fans kind of lobbying for us to do Robotech miniatures, one of those guys being Tom Roach. I always like to give Tom sort of a call out because I don't know if we would have done this without Tom. And uh, he was a big advocate of uh, us or somebody doing a Robotech miniature game. And uh, once we started looking at the numbers and thinking about the possibilities, we're like, you know, this would be pretty awesome. You know, and as Robotech fan geeks ourselves, we thought, man, it'd be great to have these detailed little figures. And, uh, you know, I, for one, just as a collector, would like to have them on my shelf, and, which I do. And, uh, you know, it, 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 it just seemed exciting. Now, it turned out to be, you know, a much different animal than what we were used to. And the learning curve has been tremendous. I imagine so. I would definitely imagine so. I mean, I've done my own Kickstarters, and they were quite small compared to yours. So I can't imagine the work that has gone into yours. I mean, we sort of can't either. I mean, we lived it. Well, fulfillment, <laughs> even, I mean, is very different. And, yeah. You know, when you got to rely on products coming from overseas, you say what you want, people. You can yell and you can scream. But I remember when I owned a store, and whiz kids shipments of Mech Warrior Dark Age were delayed 12 weeks because they couldn't get them through customs. And yeah, it's, it still happens. For all you know, there's engine blocks on that ship. You're supposed to laugh. Yeah, it's... Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, it's... Uh, uh, yeah, so it was a fan-based project, basically. It, basically. I mean, because, yeah, we're, we're, so we're once fans, you, and fans contacted us, and you know, we listened to people, and... We saw the potential, and we, we, we ran with it. And, yeah, we've had a lot of stumbles. I mean, I'm the first to admit that because um, uh, we had to learn so much. You mentioned China and shipping and uh, all that. All those are beasts. Well, there's new license stuff, too, to do with Harmony Gold. I mean, that's... Psh, there had to be a lot of work there. And then um, I know from talking with sculptors, you got to work with the sculptors. they got to... Actually, did you do the work with the sculptors, or did that go right to Harmony Gold? We, we actually worked through Ninja Division, which is Soto Pop Miniatures and uh, Cypher Studios. Um, they kind of combined and became Ninja Division. And uh, Ninja Division handled a lot of the actual miniature and, and creative end of that, the, the sculptors and uh, all that. Because uh, you know, we sat back and, and said, okay, we see the possibility of this game, and if you think it would be awesome, it's wonderful to do. But we knew our own limitations. We knew we didn't know enough to actually make this happen. And so we brought in um, Ninja Division to help us realize what we needed. And we trusted a lot of their judgment on things. And um, they got us going. But there was still such a, a huge learning curve on every level. I mean, it was just like, you know, the Kickstarter was just huge all by itself. And then maintaining communication, which we've done an intermittently good and poor job on, um, you know, trying to figure out exactly what we're going to do. The whole market, I mean, war gamers are a very different animal than <laughs> role players. That's right. It just is. And that's not, that's, that's not saying it's good or bad, it's just different. And we had to learn that dynamic, we had to learn all kinds of things like, like what do war gamers want, what do they expect. Uh, what do the Kickstarters want? How do we handle this? I mean, just even figuring out and learning how to, you know, what to say, when to say it. Uh, like, we were way too optimistic with release dates. Uh, and then there were just delay and delay and delay, you know, that none of us anticipated, not even Ninja Division, uh, with their, their own experience in this market. Um, and then we had the port strikes 
Uh, yeah. Or, or I guess technically it was a slowdown, but it was it was murderous. Might as well have been a strike. Uh, yeah, and, and it was just just terrible. And, and you know, like when we started shipping to overseas, we ship a bunch of stuff out on like December first. So on December first or December third or something like that, it leaves our warehouse. You know, the damn thing doesn't even get on a boat until like February. It was insane. Oh, I can't believe you shipped it. You didn't like. Well, you you had somebody take care of it overseas, right? Right. Okay. Right. We had a fulfillment center that we were shipping yeah. the product to, who would ship it, because um, it would be um, more expedient. We thought uh, to do it that way, and uh, you know, it just it was just a nightmare. Um, but I mean, it, that was a nightmare for everybody. Um, yep. Hey, I mean, come on, it made national news. Uh, it made yeah, it made national news. Um, other companies that had Kickstarters around the same time, they had the same kind of issues. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with Megacon Games, yeah. Works Minis. Mm -hmm. They did Myth. They ran into all times, it, kinds yep. of issues. Um, so it so right now we're working, we're working hard to get uh, Wave 2 done. Um, we have some other cool things I don't want to announce here because I want to announce it to the Kickstarters first. Um, well, that's fair. But uh, you know, we, we have some things I think people will like um, that's coming up. Uh, I just got approval from Harmony Gold on, on launching them all just the other day. So uh, we're pretty excited about well, that. Well, in the um, interview with Greg, I think, one of the earlier interviews, we had made mention of things. Um, I would very much like to see Robotech turn into a, I'm going to call it a three-level game, uh, taking the concept from what Spartan Games has done mm -hmm. with their second game, which was uh, Firestorm Armada. And they created a game system called Dystopian Wars and then Planetfall. And basically what it is, is it's interstellar warfare. Mm -hmm. Everything in between to the Earth. Oh yeah, no, we want to do the same thing. I mean, basically, if you see it in a TV show, you're going to get it in the game. You're going to get and that's awesome. every era of Robotech. Um, we're going to expand the, the combat rules, include space and everything else. Uh, one of the things that I want to do, and this I got from, from a fan, is... Uh, we want to have the Zentradi fight the Invid. I mean, that's what the Zentradi were created for by the Masters, was to battle the Invid. And it's never been done before, and that would be freaking awesome. Wow. I didn't know it's never been done. Um, so are we going to see infantry? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> we're going to see tanks, too. Absolutely. Which, by the way, if you guys get to see the photos that I'm going to be putting on Facebook... There's some stuff that's even unpainted in the showcase. In the size, in retrospect, just blows me away. Yeah, it just it does. I mean, I look at the stuff and I'm like, oh yeah. And then you see some of these. What is the one with the four guns called? Uh, I play so many games. I'm gonna call it the Behemoth. Is that oh, correct? Oh, the monster. The monster. Yeah, the Mach two monster. I, I think the, the barrels are like this, and that's yeah, a, that's a good six inches. Yeah. Um, it, it's gonna be an awesome figure. Um, that's I, that's my, one of my personal favorite mech designs. And I love that thing. And uh, I, I've always been a fan of the Veritech fighters. I mean, I love the Veritechs. I love all the Destroids. I mean, I'm a huge Robot fan. I love, but there's something about the monster that just visually, I mean, it's just this big walking howitzer for God's sake. You know, it's just it's pretty cool. You know, we're going to upgrade the rules, we're going to do advanced rules, we're going to make rules available online, we're going to do a lot more online, there's a lot we want to do, it's just a matter of, you know, getting it done and, and getting it out there. So we're going to see campaign rules. Uh, we're going to see all everything. We have big plans for RoboTech. Now, will those plans carry over in five years <laughs> to Rifts? I hope so. That, that honestly is the plan. We would love to do something with riffs. And, uh, I would love to see it as a miniature game. I, have, I mean, I know you already have some minis. Um, and I, I would kind of like to stay at probably about the 28 millimeter range. But with some of those Coalition War Machines and stuff like that, I know that's almost an impossibility. I would actually like to see a game totally based around the Coalition War. Oh, yeah. Oh, um, absolutely. That would be like... Um, 40K's epic yep. game. So yep. I don't know what scale that is. So you got the, gosh, I can't remember, the big walking yep. colossal coalition bots that in real life are what? How big are those things? 300 feet, 100 feet? No, they're not that big. They're, they seem that big. Yeah, they're, um, they're like 30 to 50 feet. Uh, see, they seem a lot bigger than that. <laughs> <clears throat> 
That I can handle in 28 mil because 30 to 50 feet is only six six yeah, inches ish. That sounds right. So that's that's doable. Yeah. Uh, well, actually, in 28 mil, if my dad's right, and he usually is, <laughs> uh, it's 5.6 feet. Um. Yeah, I think that does sound right. Yeah. It's real close to it's. it's he, he had the decimal yeah, yeah. point go out even yeah. farther, but you know that's good enough. Um, and that's for true 28, which most miniature war games are 30 closer yeah. to 32 yep mm -hmm. so there there is a variance so one inch is roughly six feet um and you know you can take that however you want 40k doesn't follow it so you know you don't have to but they don't because yeah. a space marine is only an inch and a quarter tall and they're supposed to be closer no they're only an inch tall and they're supposed to be like true 28 millimeter and that would put them almost two inches tall and they're not mm. so it's all about what you want, I guess. And detail. Um, I, I, I'm definitely looking forward to a Risk game. I was one of the first role-playing games I played. And then when I got into minis, I actually still have some of the pewter stuff. Well, actually, I have all the pewter stuff I ever had still. I just never painted it. Mm -hmm. It's primed black and I'm right, right, painting right. Um, I have a Skelebot squad and I think I have some dog boys. Oh, cool. Um, and I've never, I, I bought it to use it and then we kind of stopped playing quite a bit. Um, like one guy's in Iraq. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's rough when people get spread out. Yeah, and we, we really haven't, you know. And then the other guy's in Carrollton, and he's got twi or triplets, and so he's, you know, he's a busy dad, and I'm a busy dad with three kids. So it makes it a little harder. So we're gonna start branching out and doing it um, other ways. But um, okay, back to Roatech. You're in Wave Two, and you're doing that now. Um, what's left after Wave Two? Um, well, that will satisfy our current our, Kickstarter. Our current Kickstarter. And then we're toying around with exactly what we want to do next. We're, we're, we're toying with the idea of uh, introducing the Invid and, and the Zentradi, and you have the Invid Zentradi Wars. Um, cause that could be fun. Uh, we might jump to uh, the new generation part and do that and then introduce the Southern Cross stuff. Um, there are some very avid Southern Cross fans, but a lot of people... Um, just aren't into Southern Cross that much, which, in, from a war game point of view, I think that attitude is just dead wrong because there's so much cool stuff in Southern Cross with the 15 well, you know, the war and gamers, their weapons and their. From a war game point of view, because as far as I know, nobody's ever done a Robotech war game. Ever. No. Never tried. No. Um, and as far as I know, they've never done a board game. I. Don't think so. I, yeah, but I, I don't sure. know of one. I mean, I'm. I know not, a video game. I'm not a world expert on every game that's ever been printed, so you can hate me if you want. Um, <clears throat> but I think there's a lot of room with war gamers because war gamers, by far and large, they want more toys. Sure. Uh, I know I'm. Yeah, one we're going to give it to them. I, I'm one of them. I mean, I. Yeah. I'm one of those guys that I just never seem to have enough. Um, I wish I knew how to paint. Like the Flash, because I have probably yeah that I have so much respect for the guys who can paint a good looking mini. Well, I can I, paint a good looking mini, but it takes me too long. It's just yeah, I I don't have the patience for it. It's tough. Uh, I lose patience. I'm an artist. I just but that is just and some of these guys just do oh my god amazing lose, work, amazing uh, work. I lose it after about an hour. I don't. I've, I've watched some of the, well. I've interviewed guys from all over, and I've talked to one guy about uh, when. Privateer Press came out with the Colossals. I'm like, so, wow, that's beautiful. How, how much are you going to want for that? He's well, ask me when I'm done. <laughs> I'm like, what's wrong with this model? I mean, yeah. he goes, well, I've probably got another 100 hours of work in it. Wow. I'm like, what? Yeah. Uh, how? How is that possible? And then I go, well, if you, can, if you have another 100 in it, what's already been done to it? He goes, I've got three weeks of work in this. Wow. How? I, at some point in time, you can't see detail anymore. At least I can't. You know, I mean, I don't, um, and I'm not complaining about it, but I, that's just too much for me. Yeah. Uh, I get to a, I, I get about an hour in on a model, and I set it down. Uh, I try and come back to it. I almost always fail. I'm like, hey, that's good enough for the table. Yeah. Um, well, I'm amazed at some of the stuff that is good enough for the table. Um, some of it looks beautiful. Uh, I know a guy. Well, there's a wide argument there, depending on who you get, because I've played a lot of different miniature games, and I've played everything from 40K to 
Fantasy to Privateer Press to, I don't know, some Void 1.1. Mm -hmm. And uh, traditionally speaking, tabletop quality is three colors. That's mm -hmm. its definition. It, which means you can put flesh on, base coat the body, and paint the guns black. Okay. And that's tabletop quality. Okay. Now, you talk to some fanatic 40K players... Tabletop quality is no less than three colors shaded out to nine degrees of color. So you've actually got 27 shades. Yeah, I've, oh. I've got a four o'clock game coming up. Okay, so. we're, we're almost done. I'm sorry. Oh, no, that's okay. One of my guys came in to flash me a message. That's why I had to look away. That, that's okay. Um, I don't remember where I was going. Anyway, it's not, that part's not important. Uh, there was another question. I didn't mean to... Interrupt, but he actually it was reading the message that threw me. I shouldn't yeah. have turned around. Um, we were talking about the models and haven't painted them, yep. and well, anyway, shoot. Oh, wait, we're are you gonna do like any special tournaments at Gen Con? We're, we're not doing tournaments at Gen Con, but we have a ton of uh, games and demos. And so, those we, are all gonna be in the hall, or are you gonna have them um, outside the hall? Um, well, the demos, actually, they don't do in the hall anymore, do they? they um, you can have some at your booth. Well, you can do both. Um, no, we're going to have, have much at the booth. This is all actual gaming events that you can sign up for and participate in. But it's not a tournament, per se. Okay. Uh, although everyone who participates in those things should get a little something that I think people will like. That's a hint. I'm, I'm participating <laughs> now. That might be the you, I've gone to Gen Con now. Actually, five times. And there's only one time that I've ever played any games. Mm -hmm. That was the time I went with my wife to see... I don't know why... We went there to see something. I don't remember what it was. But every other time I've been there as a volunteer or I've been there as a blogger. Sure, sure. Um, and when I go as a blogger, I go to work. Oh, yeah. Well, it's a great opportunity. You, I, I you can't... Once a year. Yeah. You can't miss... I mean, Everybody's yeah. there. And, well, uh, I look at it like this. I, I look at it, my blog is, I try to do news and media with it, mm -hmm. um, and I do a lot of other things that you're aware of, and that hopefully you're aware of. Um, and I just look at it, and I was talking to somebody about it, and I said, I don't think I'm going to go to Gen Con. And I go, if you don't go to Gen Con, you're cutting your own throat in this industry. So I look at it as, boom. And last year at Gen Con, I did about 40 videos. Wow. Which is a lot for one guy. Yeah. <laughs> That, that's a lot. It is. Um, but anyway, uh, anything you want to add about Robotech? Um, just keep your eyes peeled. We're going to be making a bunch of announcements in the next few weeks, and uh, I think it's going to be good, exciting stuff. Watch your Facebook page. And do uh, you have a Twitter account? Um, we do, but we don't oh, yeah, use it do. all that much. I just, but, I just uh, tweeted you. I was going to be here, actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah we've we got to start doing more, a lot more on social media, and we got some cool things planned with that, too, so... Well, they make social media managers for that. Yeah, they do. You have a big staff. One of them should learn. <laughs> it only takes 10 minutes a day. So, anyway, enough said. Um, thanks, Kevin. My pleasure, uh, this, this So far, this has been a blast. I'm only going to be here for one day. So I will probably not play any games, although I did demo yeah, Robotech. That's too bad. The tournaments are tomorrow. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, I had to work. And, I understand. Sadly, I, the same. I yeah. still do that for a living. Um, but anyway, thanks guys, uh, and I'll see you at Origins if you don't watch anything between now and then. <laughs>